All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, working with PDF files. So um, I've showed you a lot of features of Google Docs and um, there's and Google Slides. We haven't talked really about uh, Google Slides, but using um, Google native Google formats with students on specifically on Chromebooks um, or in the Chrome browser will allow students to interact with a file and collaborate in a native format without needing to use other tools to make it work for you. With that being said, there's also a reason for us to need uh, to work on some PDFs. So if the, you have files that are PDF files, um, there's different tools that you can use for uh, annotating or marking up or being able to uh, use those PDF files with students and Chromebooks. So I want to give you uh, two tools uh, for that right now. I want to talk about best practices and workflow in terms of how best to utilize those tools and uh, your Chromebooks. So I have some classes again uh, here that I've used and I've actually use specifically this village Chromebook class, but um, so we'll just show you what it looks like and you'll see I created this assignment on the fly last week while working with some teachers and um, it's a it's a PDF file that I had in my um, Google Drive. So you'll see that this was my file that I assigned to them. Every student gets a gets a copy and it's a PDF. So I'm going to kind of walk you through how I created this. Um, let me just show you what it looked like for me. So I created this assignment. I gave all of the students a copy of this PDF. And when I come in here and I look at all of my student work and I open up a student's PDF file that's attached back, once they load in here, you'll see you can see just like with the Google Docs attached, all the students' files are there, and if I open someone's file in the preview window that I naturally get in um, Google, I can see their annotations right onto the file here, and I can see the file like this and read through their annotations and mark it up as necessary and then return it to them. So Amy did some great work. I can grade Amy's work and I can return it to her. If I wanted to mark up Amy's work, I could also then mark up Amy's work using the same tool that the students used and then return it to her as well. So I'm gonna show you that whole workflow right now, um, how that works. And then I'm gonna actually use this as an example since I don't have active students right now um, to work on until you guys turn in some things for me. So um, I'm gonna go back to my home. So right now, uh, what's happening is, is that we have been given this Cami Pro trial. Um, so it's the school's version of Cami, which is a PDF annotation tool. And we recommend using either Cami or using um, Doc Hub, and they both have pros or cons. And so I'm gonna show you what both of the features of those two tools are, and then, um, then you can kind of decide which one you feel like you want to use uh, more or kind of interchange them as needed for students. So um, when I come down here to create an assignment, I now have this create a cami assignment. That's a pro feature. Um, and the pro feature really, there's not a, a ton of perks to it. Here's the perks. You lose the ads that you would normally get in cami. Um, you get this quick button to create a Cami assignment and all it's gonna do is basically take you through Cami to create an assignment um, using their interface rather than Google's interface. And then once students open a file, it's automatically saved without them having to press a button save. And they get it like a handy turn in button. That's what I have taken away from the Cami Pro um, as features. Uh, without all of those features, the the workflow through Classroom is still very streamlined and super easy. And I think actually still kind of aligns more with your workflow than using this Cami Pro button. Um, you're more than welcome to use it, but you should know that uh, after the end of October, students are going to need to press the Save Now button. So we're encouraging them to save their Cami assignments uh, regularly will help alleviate any of those issues because the save is where they sync basically any of their changes back to their drive. 
So I'll show you what I did. So I, I avoided this and I just kicked it old school and just did it the old way because that's going to work. So I'm going to say create an assignment. And I'm going to make an assignment PDF. And you guys are going to see this in Classroom because I'm going to create one for you. Um, now, I know that some of us don't like having students uh, using our notes as um, assignments in classroom and we'd rather use them as announcements and have students be in charge of, of filtering where those notes go. And that's totally fine. You can do the same thing. When you give them an assignment, they're gonna open, or an announcement, sorry, that's just notes. They're gonna open up those notes and they're gonna send them into Kami and they're gonna take their notes and then they just need to save them back into the folder that you want them to save it into within their Google Drive. And I can show you what that looks like as well. So. Um, So I'm going to put in here, fill this out. I don't want a due date. I'm going to give it a topic. Just so I can filter my stream. And then I'm going to attach the file that I want students to have access to. So when this opens up, you can filter your drive automatically right now by just searching for PDFs. This is easier for me because um, I don't have a ton of PDFs that I use um, with students on a regular basis. So I have this little poetry and nonfiction file in my drive. I'm just grabbing something randomly and I'm going to add that. So um, I'm going to change this from students can view to file to uh, make a copy for each student. So if you are doing an assignment with PDFs, absolutely do this. Make a copy for each student. It's going to organize it. It's going to create a folder in their drive and it's going to uh, give them their own copy of their work and all the cha changes will be logged in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and assign this. So then this is going to get assigned and now everybody who's in my class is getting an assignment uh, through here and they are going to open up the assignment and do some work in that assignment. So I'm going to switch into uh, my student account so that you can see that. Okay, so here I am in my student account and I'm in my classroom and here's my assignment that I, that I just assigned to me. So I open this file up and because it's an assignment, that Jackie gave me as um, every student gets their own copy, my copy is going to be sitting on here. So here's my copy of my file, and this looks great. So this process is actually, I think, a little bit more streamlined. So when I click on this file and it opens up in this window here, I have this button right here at the top that says Open with Cami, and it's ready for me to open it with Cami. If you don't see that button, it's because um, it ha probably hasn't updated or not. And so then you would just say open a new window and then you'll have an open with Cami button at the top here. So, and I'm pretty sure that this, um, this open with Cami default happening here is part of that pro license. And so if that's not there, you pop it out to the new window with the three dots over here and you say open a new window. And then here you get this open with. So here's where you could have students bounce between uh, the two different types of apps that you would want them to open it with, either Cami or DocHub. Um, if you don't see any apps there, it's because you just haven't connected those apps to your drive. And so you'd say connect more apps and then you'd search for either Cami or DocHub, um, respectively, whatever one that you wanted students to work with. Um, you can browse through these if you'd like, but um, those are the ones that I found have worked really well and are uh, set up to engage directly with, with Drive and student work. So if you search for Cami or you search for DocHub, they'll pop up like this, and then you can add them. Okay, and this is the one you want, PDF and document markup. They have an OCR reader, they have a split and merge, and they're all like separate applications, which I don't love. And in DocHub, all of those features are kind of um, are built in. So there's definitely pros and cons to both. So if you search for DocHub, um, if I search for Doc, let's see. There it is, DocHub, all one word, DocHub. 
So if you search for Doc Hub, it'll come up and, and have students add that one as well because they're great apps. So I'm going to say open with Cami. I have it here because of the end. I'm pretty sure this is that pro license, but um, you can also just click it here while enjoy it while it's there. So once it opens up in Cami, it's going to open up the file in the Cami viewer, which looks like this. I'll show you what um, some of the pro tools are, and you'll see that this trial ends in um, a few days. I'm just going to allow Google Drive. It's because I'm signed in as my student. I haven't done this before, so make sure that you know you authorize Google Drive. When they do that, you say allow, and then it'll open. So all these tools over here on the left-hand side aren't going to go away. I'll show you which ones will once it loads here. So the select tool, the highlight tool, striking through text, underlining text, um, adding comments, those all stay text. The equation editor is a pro feature. Um, the drawing tool is there and the shapes tool is a pro feature. And then all of these other tools are all, I believe, in the regular version. So you really do have a lot of uh, functionality just with their basic version. And this is what it looks like here. Um, so I'm in my drive and then I'm here with my file and uh, we'll make sure that we, I'm going to pop out, I'm just going to pop out um, this one. So this file that was popped out, I'm going to say open with Cami and I just want to see where this one comes from because this what I'm saying here is only went from my drive into this file here. Like it's going to put it right at my root and it's not going to embed it with my folder. I'll show you how you can change that. But I just was curious to see if without using that button and popping it out, if it puts it where it's supposed to put it, which it very well may. Um, anyway, so your students can use the text tool and... You can use the text tool. You can use the drawing tool. Um, the touch on this is pretty great. So um, you could use the drawing tool in here and answer. And then scrolling down more. You can zoom in and out with just a pinch. So if you pinch in, you can zoom in and out. The dictionary is a pro tool up here. You'll see under there you get like a dictionary that's totally pro. Um, so you get the idea. So um, highlighting, I recommend using when you're under the highlight tool, if you do the box highlight. Um, I don't know why it's popping up and asking for me to allow that again. I just did that. It might be because I'm bouncing in and out of my accounts. It normally wouldn't do that twice. I should just keep it once, but. Okay, so the highlight tool um, will only, well, I guess it, you have to like click and drag over to do a highlight. Um, and you can change them by like clicking and dragging. It's not, it doesn't work with the, with like a finger to highlight as you're kind of like you would an actual highlighter. So what you could do is you could click on the pen. You could do this. You could change your transparency here and change the size of it so that it acts like a highlighter, um, which would be even easier. So that is, I think, n much nicer than um, trying to like click and drag, but up to you. So I make all my changes here, and so this is where my file is going. I can change the name of my file if I wanted to. I don't really want to because I like the naming convention of Google Drive. So what um, I need to do is I need to click on the save icon and you'll see, do you see this auto save is, um, checked and it's auto saving this. Um, that is because of the pro license. So once that goes away, they just have to make sure that they click save now. 
it is saving it right now to my root. So I want to move this into, um, into my assignment folder. And the only reason it's just not making the connection the way that it's supposed to, it should have pulled right from the assignment folder and I shouldn't have to move it. But by moving it here, um, by having them go through this, if you're somebody who created subfolders inside your Google Classroom folder for like notes, vocabulary, units, your students could move it into the appropriate folder as you go. Um, so if I went into my drive, I could go into my classroom. So I'd want it, and this is the class I'm in. And then if I had subfolders in here, I would put it into a subfolder. So that's where I would really want it to go, um, is into that folder. And it's not even letting me select. There we go, select that folder, because I don't have a subfolder in there. So, and then I would just push it into that folder by clicking the Save Now. And that will ch put all of those changes into the PDF that is actually attached to the classroom assignment. Um, just for kicks and giggles, I opened up this other file from the popped out window and I was just curious where this opened from. So I'm just going to allow this and it did. It went right where it's supposed to go. So I just want to show you the difference between those. So do you see how this is already going into the Village Chromebook folder? So when, when I clicked on the file, instead of clicking on this Cami button, if you clicked open a new window, it's going to bring it here and then this open with, and then choose your editor, that's going to really put it where it needs to go. Um, so do that practice. That's the best practice to do. It's going in my Village Chromebook folder already, and I click Save Now, and it's going where it needs to go. It's pretty awesome. Um, so once it's saved, I can just come back to my classroom folder. Here's my classroom folder and then come back to my assignment. All those changes are going through Drive. All of them are there. So I can just click turn in and my teacher is going to receive all of my annotations on my document. I don't have to reattach anything if I'm assigning it with that every student gets their own copy. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm just going to sign into the account and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so back in my class, you'll see my students turned it in, and then if I open this up, I can open up my, fi my student's file and see their changes to the file. So when I open it up like this, I will see all of the annotations that my student made. You see them there. If I want to market this up, Again, don't press this button open with Cami right here, and that's because of that pro trial. Um, click on the three dots here and say open a new window, and then open with Cami. It's one extra step, I know, um, but it's going to alleviate some of those um, step issues when, when the bonus trial goes away. And to be honest, I think I'm just going to ask them to remove us from the trial page because I think it's going to create more com confusion than it is going to um, work in your favor. So once this opens here, I can mark up my students' work. So now what I can do is do comments and I can make like little comments here. If I just click in, it's going to put like a radio button and I can add comment. And I can go through and do other things. Highlight. Um, I can use the drawing tools. I can do all of the things that you could do before. Um, on the file and then when you're done marking up the student's file you'll see that this is going into the right folder the PDF for you folder that's the uh, folder that I assigned the file from so if you hit save now my students gonna get all of those comments back um, which is really nice one of the the um, pro features is when you're in this comment tool and you click to add a comment 
uh, you get this video or audio comment. I'm pretty sure the video comment is a pro feature, but you do have the ability to add audio comments regularly onto the file. So you could do that. You could also screencast yourself marking up somebody's file if you wanted to, and then just attach a video back to them through Drive. Um, you could totally do that. So um, this is going into the right file. So I know it's one extra step, but pop these out from, from here. Don't click on this button, pop these out. Again, from the student view, I did the same thing. Pop it out into that new window. That's the workflow that's always gonna work for you. And it's really crisp because it puts it right into the subfolder where you want it to go. Um, so that's super cool.